I haven't recorded in over a month now. So I'm just gonna answer everyone's top three questions in order. No, I'm not dead. No, the channel's not dead. And yes, I'm going to be uploading as usual. All that's been going on is that I've been writing my end of year exams and it's pretty demanding. Most of you don't know that I'm still in school and luckily this is my last year of school. So it's the most important marks because it's what you use to apply to university. So I've been studying for the past month because we've been writing for the past month and I just didn't really have time to get to this business as well. However, I have about two to three weeks now of vacation where I'm going to be making videos as usual. However, then it's going to be exams again. So then for about another month, I'm not going to be able to upload as much as I'd like to. So just a heads up, no need to send me emails again of asking if I'm dead. The next few videos are going to be version twos of videos that I have done in the past because their quality is just not what I want them to be. I got a comment on one of my old videos saying that the music is pretty annoying. I don't really think of it much, however, when I actually went to watch that video, I was like, yeah, the music is really annoying. The audio sounds bad. The video is bad. Like everything about this video is bad, but I don't really want to delete the video because it's nice to look back on your old videos and see how bad they were versus how not bad they are now. It's nice to look back at them, but um, I'm going to have to remake some of these videos because they are just too bad and they are too important to my business. Some of these videos are like the only marketing that I have for some of my best selling bots and these videos need to be up to standard, which is why I'm going to be remaking three or four of them uh, just because I want them to look better because I show them to a lot of new people. Now, if you haven't seen those videos please don't go watch them because they are really bad anyway today is going to be the first remake of one of my best selling bots the auditor assistance so enjoy the video all right so here is the bot itself it's mainly split into two parts depending on who i sell it to it might come with the first part not present or present so the first part is just a login system and the second part is the bot itself so let's demonstrate so let's say that for this bot um we had users sign in with an email so it's just botness is training bot. Obviously, I'm not going to put the business's name there. Please enter your business email. So let's say that your business email is that. Greetings, my password. Doesn't matter. You can choose what it is. And then it says here, if at any point you'd like to the conversation to end, you can type end. If you need some help, you can type help. If you want to give feedback on the bot, you can type the word feedback. But I really just want to focus on the question answering abilities today. So this bot uses the IAS and IFRS uh, documents, but I don't know anything about pretty much anything legal. So I asked ChatGPT to give me some potential questions that I can answer to help you guys understand what this thing can do. So I quite like this one. Can you explain the difference between IAS 16 and IAS 38? I have no idea what it is. So we'll ask the bot. All right, so here it says they are both international accounting standards that deal with different aspects of accounting for tangible and intangible assets respectively. IA 16 known as property plan and equipment provides guidance on the recognition of whatever on the other hand. IA 38 also known as intangible assets. So then ChatGPT tells us what it should have said. The bot can compare how IA 16 deals with property and IA 38 addresses intangible assets which it did, so that's good. Here we have case specific guidance. All right, I quite like number four and six. A company recently acquired a building, should it classify it under property, plant and equipment, or as an investment property? A company has a foreign subsidiary. What are the guidelines for transiting foreign currency financial statements? I think I'm actually going to ask it both because it, it, it's pretty good questions, I think. Um, so I think in summary, it just says if the company intends to use the building in its day-to-day -day operations, such as for manufacturing office space, then it should be classified as property, plant and equipment. On the other hand, if the uh, company intends to hold the building for rental income or for debt or for capital appreciation without using it in its day-to-day -day operation, then it should be classified as an investment property. And I think ChatGPT agrees. It says guiding the user on how to determine the classification based on usage, which I think is correct because it says that it, if you use it for day-to-day, -day, you should use it for property, plant and equipment. For the other one, um, you shouldn't. For number six, I quite like two. Uh, just for recap, this one says a company has a foreign subsidiary. What are the guidelines for translating foreign currency financial statements? Now it says in South Africa, and that is because the last people that I built this for was based in South Africa, my home country. All right, so first you need to determine the a functional currency. The functional currency is the currency of the primary 
economic environment in which the subsidiary operates, using the approximate exchange rate, translating assets and liabilities, translating income and expenses, recognizing translation differences. And ChatGPT agrees, it says uh, functional currency, uh, presentation currency and translation methods. Now for practical calculations, I think this question is pretty good. How do I calculate depreciation using the straight line method as per IAS 16? Determine the cost of the asset, determine the estimated useful life of the asset, determine the estimated residual value of the asset, calculate the depreciable amount, divide the depreciable amount by the estimated useful life. And Excel, they say that you can use that formula. And ChatGPT agrees because it says that demonstrate the possibility to walk through a calculation using real numbers and explaining the concept of useful life and residual life which it did. Now for compliance and reporting, I think this is a pretty good one. How should a company report discontinued operations? It says that in South Africa, you should do it according to IFRS standards to be presented in financial statements, including the income statement, statement of comprehensive income and statement of cash flows. I have no idea what it's saying, but I'm just guessing it's right. Uh, however, according to ChatGPT, it is correct because it does reference IFRS and explain the criteria, which it did do. All right, so this is what I really, really want to show off. And this is like industry specific knowledge and reasoning skills. This is a good one. A real estate company wants to recognize revenue from a property sale. Should it follow IFRS 15 or IAS 40? It says that the company should follow IFRS 15 revenue from contracts with customers to recognize revenue from the property sale. IAS 40, 40 uh, is more focused on the measurement and disclosure. Let's see what HGBT says. And it agrees. All right, so here we have some nice specific questions that I want to ask because this is mainly what the bot is used for. The whole reason we have this bot in the first place is because companies like these auditors are not allowed to use ChatGPT because it sends its data back to OpenAI, which violates a client privacy policy or something like that. And my bot's main advantage is that it doesn't do that. So here we have a real estate developer has completed a residential project, but has not yet sold any units. How should the developer account for the unsold units? The developer should, should account for the unsold uh, units as inventory on their balance sheet. They can use the cost method or the low cost method. Once again, no idea if this is right, but ChatGPT agrees, so I assume it's right. Here for banking, a bank is involved in a derivative contract. Can it apply hedge accounting for interest rate risk and how should it be accounted for? It says that in South Africa, banks can apply hedge accounting for interest rate risk. Hedge accounting allows banks to offset the gains and the losses of a derivative contract against the gains and the losses on the hedged item. Once again, I have no idea to vet if this is right or not, but ChatGPT says it's right, so great. If you know someone that is interested in something like this, works in the industry, or wants something like this built for themselves with their own information, data, and industry, I'll put my email on the screen. You're more than welcome to send me an email. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I am so happy to be back on YouTube to be recording again because this is so much fun for me, and it grows the business, so it feels good. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.